but say that we have to say that the data is constantly changing and we want financially consistent results. That's where indexes come in. So now get the black piece of paper from your handouts. The black piece of paper is what results after you run this create index statement. Indexes are stored in 8K pages, just like clustered indexes are. Non-clustered indexes are stored in the same format. Again, things get a little weird when you go to column store, but we'll leave that for another day. And the first thing that you'll notice is that I now have two copies of the table. Now, when I want to do an insert, I need to read both pages that are involved with the row that I want to insert in the spot that I want to put in. I have to lock these, make changes, and commit them back down to disk. I've just doubled my storage workload. I haven't doubled the size of the database, though, because if you notice, I can fit four times as many users on here that I can on here. There are four columns of users here. There's only one column of users here because I have less fields on here. But if I want to go through and seek directly to one particular user or one particular last access date, that's going to make my queries a whole lot faster. As a side note for people who are kind of senior DBAs in the room, you may have heard of the concept of a B tree, balance tree, B plus tree. Here, we're going to specifically focus on the leaf pages of the index. There are also supporting trees that some people will call index pages. That is not what we're referring to in here today. We do go into those inside mastering index tuning. So now that you have your two copies of the table, the white copy and the black copy, run this query again. Say select ID from users where last access date is greater than 7 1 of 2014. Now I'm only selecting ID here. We've learned that select star sucks and we're going to try to avoid that. So let's just pick out one particular field that we're going to go get. Now think about how you're going to execute this query. So now your execution plan is that you go grab the black index and you, you do something different here. Before, when we were going over to the corner of the room where the white pages were stored, we were going through all of them. We don't have to do that anymore. Now we can kind of earmark and go, here's where July the 1st is of 2014. I can seek directly into this one row and start reading those rows forward. This is what SQL Server does. I love these little icons on the execution plans. They do such a good job of illustrating what SQL Server is doing. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good considering how small the pixel count is. Here, SQL Server, now I, I should actually say though, you, you see the tree? The, the tree's upside down. I don't know why people in Washington think that the leaves go on the bottom. There are lots of trees in Washington. The people in Redmond need to leave and go outside more, leave the office, go stop working on SQL Server. Maybe not. Maybe they should keep working on SQL Server, but the leaves should be at the top. So SQL Server is going to dive bomb directly into one page on the non-clustered index and start reading those rows out. There's no sort in here anymore because the data is already sorted in a way that beautifully matches our index. We're dive bombing directly into one date and we're reading the rows out in order. The cost just plummets. There's no parallelism in here because SQL Server is like, this is easy. Oh, I totally got this covered. It's going to cost me what less than one query buck. It's going to cost me like a query quarter and a nickel and a pennies or whatever. When I compare these, even when I do select star, the cost dro drops pretty dramatically. But why does the cost drop? Why is it so much cheaper? Why is it faster for SQL Server to do this work with this query with an index? Well, there are two parts to the answer. One is that we're reading less pages. If I take the same two queries back to back, and in the first one now, I'm going to have to hint it to say, yo, I want you to use the clustered index. Trust me. That's what index equals one means. You should never do that in real life. It's a really crappy way to enforce bad performance. It's enforcing a table scan. Yeah, there are edge cases where you could probably do that. You, me, and Adam Mechanic have maybe done it five times in our life. But for the most part, you should never see index hints like this. Here I'm saying force the clustered index. That's about 7,000 logical reads. But when I let SQL Server choose the right index and it chooses the black pages, I only have to do 335 logical reads. The amount of reads I'm doing drops by like 20x. And that's a good start. But there's something else that's really interesting in terms of performance. 
we're also using way less CPU time. Because remember before when I was running this query 100 times in a row and CPU was through the roof, my CPU was like 70, 80% across SQL Server's cores. Well, now there's no sorting in the plan. Sorting's already done. So if I turn on set statistics time on, now I don't use this nearly as often because it's not nearly as repeatable, it tends to go all over the place based on what other stuff is happening on your SQL Server, on the VM host, your cloud host, whatever. So it's much less repeatable. But you notice the difference inside here. Before it was like 190 milliseconds. Now it's down to 63 milliseconds. That's awesome. This index perfectly covers that query's needs. It reduces the CPU. It reduces the reads. Off we go and we go so much faster. So there's a name for this kind of index. It's called a covering index. The index perfectly covers the query's needs. However, the term covering means it has to have a query involved. I can't just create a covering index. It has to be tied directly to the query because if something changes about that query, the index will no longer cover it or may no longer cover it depending on what the query looks like later. At first glance, as we're going through this, it would sound like, all right, non-clustered index seeks are the bomb. I want to make sure that every index on every index access on an execution plan is always a non-clustered index seek. But read a little closer into that query plan. Index seek sounds so lightweight and magically delicious. It's, it's like it's tiny, right? Even the word sounds tiny. Seek, seek. It's like something that a cricket or a bird would say. But notice that I'm seeking in and I'm reading 148,000 rows. Suddenly it doesn't sound so small. You probably thought that a seek, a seek is super lightweight and only accesses like one or two rows. We're going to dive bomb directly into one part of the table, grab one row and bail out. But that's not what it means. And you probably also think that a scan means you're going to start at one end of the table and read the whole entire thing and then bail out. But that's not what that means either. In order to illustrate it, I'm going to take a couple of different queries. I'm going to take the same query that we've been working with so far, but I'm going to change the last access date to 1-1 of 1800. Pro tip, stack overflow, not around in the year 1800. But SQL Server doesn't know that. SQL Server goes, oh, so, so you want me to seek to one row in the table and then start reading those rows forward. Got it. I'm on it. But SQL Server doesn't know that's not the first row because we haven't said anything in our database that says there are no rows earlier than this date. SQL Server is just like, well, it's a date field. It could be anything. Maybe Nicolas Cage is back there trying to find the Declaration of Independence. And that was the last time that he logged in. Now, you might say that objects have statistics, and we'll get to that later, but statistics aren't up to date. Rows can be added at any time, and that doesn't trigger a statistics update. So when SQL Server sees this, it just knows it's going to seek to a place in the table. It doesn't know if it's the first row or not. What seek means is I know where I'm going to jump to. It doesn't mean I'm done. It means I'm going to jump to a spot, but then I may end up reading the whole entire table. Conversely, scan doesn't mean I'm going to read the entire table. It just means that I'm going to start at one end of the table and I'm going to read until I find enough rows to satisfy my query. I'll give you an example of a great seek. Select top 10 star from users. No where clause. I don't care which top 10 you give me. Any 10 users, give them to me and you're done. Well, SQL Service says, oh, there's a stack of white pages over there in the corner. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go grab the first one, and I'm going to start yelling out users until I give you 10, and, and then I'm done. As far as SQL Server is concerned, it's a scan because it starts at one end of the stack and then just starts reading. But it doesn't mean it reads the whole table. It doesn't have to. Here, you see a clustered index scan, but it only read 10 rows, and it only did five logical reads. My goal here with explaining that to you is to make sure that you understand that you don't, your goal isn't to go look at the execution plan and go, seek, 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 my work here is done, because it's not. There are times when there are terrible seeks, and there are times when there are awesome scans. Those words aren't good or bad by themselves at all. You have to look at how many rows each of them is reading and how many rows it's returning. 
So what we've talked about so far, and we ain't done, we got a lot more to do, is that setstats.io shows you the number of 8K pages that you're reading. I use that a lot. Setstats time on, I don't use that quite as much because it's not as repeatable. But if you're interested in figuring out whether reading a lot of data or burning a lot of CPU time is the problem, those are two metrics that you turn on inside Management Studio. When you do a where without an index to match it, like when we were saying where last access date equals a given number or is greater than a given number, this is kind of useless to me. I'm scanning through the whole thing. I really need an index that supports my where clause so that I'm not scanning the whole entire table every single time it runs. Same thing without an order by, or as soon as I inject an order by, that's going to build a lot of CPU work and involve jumping or allocating a whole bunch of RAM in order to, to uh, satisfy my query. So let's take a brief break to thank our sponsor, Century One's Essentials. They've just brought this out as a brand new monitoring product that's a kind of smaller version of their big flagship product. And it's good for up to five SQL servers. They sell it both in a per instance model and they also have a subscription model per server too. This is really useful for if you just want to dip your toes in the water and figure out whether or not monitoring makes sense for you. Honestly, monitoring makes sense for you. I always like to say that if I, was a, if I went back to taking a full-time DBA job, like part of the job requirements, no fooling, like you have to have this before I would consider taking a job, is monitoring software. I know there's some managers out there who think that every human should write their own monitoring software. I do not subscribe to that philosophy. I am not a believer in that. Because if you roll your own monitoring apps, you're always trying to catch the stuff that failed last week. You're like, oh man, the log filled up. I didn't have an alert for that. I guess I'll go write that. Oh man, I got socked by memory grants. I got to go write an alert for that. Oh man, I got socked by deadlocking. I got to write an alert for that. And as a result, you look like you have your pants down every single time that an emergency strikes. I don't want you to look stupid. I don't want you to look like you got your pants caught down. So go check that out instead. Go try Century One's SQL, SQL Century Essentials. And then you can play around with how quickly you can get notified and not like look like you have your pants down. 